Well, hi kids. I'm using Draw Things as my stable diffusion client, and in this video, I'll show you how I trained these checkpoint models for SDXL. I'm using Dreamlook AI. It's a paid service. There's no subscription, but you do buy usage tokens. Now, I don't make any money off of this, and I have no relationship with Dreamlook other than I use them for my Dream Booth training because I'm on a Mac and I can't do it locally. And it's really easy, so easy, even a Mac user can do it, and I will be able to download my model ready to use in about 10 minutes. And then I will show you how to add the model to draw things. Now, the process is the same, just as easy as before. You log into Dreamlook. You upload between 5 and 200 photos, pick a unique trigger word or a phrase to invoke your model in the prompt, and here uniqueness means it's not a real word in any language. I see a lot of leet speak in these trigger words. I just use an at symbol and the character's name. Now there are a few more settings which you may need to experiment with. Uh, like I set my training steps a lot higher than default because I'm mixing these very stylized Loras. And the training steps seem to help my characters stay more recognizably themselves. And when they're all uploaded, I hit train and wait for that to complete. Okay, now while we're waiting, I need to apologize because I made a few Stable Diffusion XL videos in a row. And I'll admit that Stable Diffusion at a higher resolution has been my jam nonstop for a couple of weeks, but I neglected to say that I'm on a Mac Studio with 64 gigabytes of RAM, and that's allowing me to render right up to the limits of Metal's memory ceiling. And I'm hoping an Apple update will eventually move this ceiling even higher. But... A few people have reminded me that DrawThings is installed on a lot more devices that do not have that much memory, and from what I'm reading from other users, Excel takes up about 10 gigs of RAM and just simply doesn't load reliably on 8 gig iPhones and iPads, you know, or the budget 8 gigabyte Mac Mini. Now, I know there's some quantization schemes to get it working on less RAM, but for now, I think the minimum RAM for running Excel is probably 16 gigabytes. And you need a couple of gigabytes to reserve for the operating system, so that should hold it with some room to spare. With 16 gigabytes, you should be able to render around 1536 by 1024. If you want more information on how to render large images, and squeeze every last pixel out of Stable Diffusion. I made a deep dive video for Draw Things and XL, and the link is up in that corner there. Now, just as XL was becoming a little boring and routine, which would be a good thing because then I could go back to work, Style Loras started being released on Civit AI, and they've opened a whole fun new workflow for me. I found this comic book style Laura and I downloaded one for oil paint brush strokes, of course, because you can't live without one of those. And this adorable 3D cartoon, Laura. Uh, I don't know how well it's holding on to my characters, but, you know, it's definitely some of their characteristics. But mostly it's just this cute uh, figure. And more Loras are being released every day. Now, of course, it's not the volume of Loras and Checkpoint Modables, available for 1.5 not yet but what i've really been missing is my own characters as dream booth models so just a couple of days ago dream look ai where i've been doing my dream booth training now has xl dream booths but not xl loras not yet now the cost is a little under four dollars for xl models and it's still under a dollar for sd 1.5 checkpoints and loras uh, there's no XL Lords yet. Now, while we are waiting, I will show you the Dream Look interface. And there are many popular 1.5 models to train with as your base. 
with new models added since I last looked. Now you'll need to check on Civet AI to see what these models do and what their specialty is. Probably waifus and photorealism, just saying. That seems to be the trend. But if you are training on selfies of you and your girlfriend and your cat, you might want stylized models as your base to turn yourself into like an anime character. Now I start with 3D art, my figures from Character Creator, and so generally I want more photoreal or analog photography models to train against. Well that was when I was training models for SD 1.5 and there's no options for XL training, it's just the base model so far, so to be honest Stable Diffusion 1.5 is going to stick around for a while because most users have limited RAM and there's just huge community support, all the control nets and, you know, all the plugins. Now, XL models need XL LoRa's and 1.5 LoRa's only work on 1.5 models. Uh, I also mentioned training 1.5 models is cheaper, it's like a dollar whereas XL models end up being about $4. You save a little money because you buy tokens in advance and there's a tiny discount when you buy more. All right, I'm gonna go over these settings. Now first, I am switching to expert mode. And now I have the option between SD 1.5 and SDXL. So today I'm training an XL model and of course there's just the XL 1.0 base to train against so there's no model option. Now the images that you upload are going to be scaled or cropped and scaled to 512 by 512. And now I was expecting 1024 by 1024 but that's not the case. So despite only being 512 it does take a lot more steps to train for XL. And of course the results that come out of Excel will be based on Excel's default 1024 by 1024. By the way, the model, the checkpoint model that you download is also a lot bigger. It's like three to four times bigger than the 1.5 downloads. Now I'm using some old 3D character artwork images. To be honest, I've worked on all these characters since and they all need a new round of training picks but this way I can compare directly to the 1.5 models and no doubt XL is a huge improvement although I'm still I'm still finding my footing in XL with the prompts and the uh, my Laura add-ons. Now the big question in the training is how many steps and the rule of thumb on stable diffusion 1.5 was around 100 steps per image for for excel i think they're recommending about 200 steps i go higher a lot higher <laughs> i'm pretty casual about it um one of the reps at dreamlook actually admonished me for setting too many steps but uh, I'm pretty cavalier about it. And the problem is that sometimes my style Loras that are download are overtrained, And they don't really want to generate your figure as you designed. So, for instance, my dusky blonde character is turned Caucasian or brunette. And my dark haired lady gets brown eyes because AI tries to make everything look like its original training data. Now other problems that you'll notice when you do this is, I'm sure you've all seen that uh, the issue where the backgrounds take on the colors of your figure and vice versa. <laughs> it's made it kind of frustrating to get these figures into a coherent comic scene and of course SDXL is no more consistent about generating hair and clothing than SD 1.5 was before, so I've come to the realization that my characters will almost always need to be composited. So my current practical workflow is to render characters in square ratio and cut the figure out of the background so they are transparent pings, soon to be WebP. 
Now the larger render size is absolutely crucial for cutting the transparency in my opinion, whereas upscaling is not that much of an improvement over the original pixels. Upscaling looks a little harsh, so I'm trying to avoid it altogether, but if I do need it, I'm going to delay it until the final step. So now back to dream look. Are we done yet? Now through the magic of post-process editing, yes, we are done. <laughs> so you'll get an email notification. My models have generally been around 10 minutes, so I just leave the dream look window open while I wait. Uh, you have 48 hours to download your model, and after that, it gets deleted. So just to be clear, just to repeat, Dream Look makes your model available only for two days. Uh, now, so I can download the model, save it on my hard drive, but I'm going to download directly into Draw Themes. So I will copy this URL of the model from Dream Look AI website. And then I'm going to run over to draw things. I'm going to make sure it's not rendering right now. <laughs> In draw things, I open the model manager and here at the bottom is a download button. And this new window allows us to paste the model's address right at the top. But, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and name this model. Uh, this is so I can find it in the Draw Things Model Manager in that drop-down list. I'm also going to add my trigger word exactly as I said it in Dream Look. Now the rest of the settings are fine at their default, so now I'm going to click on the Download URL button and I will paste the link from Dream Look. And here we go. It is now downloading first to my download folder and draw things will import it. All right, when the download is done, yes, I agree to import it and delete the file from my downloads to save space. Thank you. And now draw things will attempt to remove the extra training data. Um, and hopefully save you some garbage, unnecessary training data from the original file. And uh, at the end of this process, it's automatically loaded as your checkpoint model. And we're ready to try out the render, so let's do that. All right, that's it, kids. Happy rendering. Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you soon. we got some stuff to discuss from Seagraph, and uh, <laughs> hopefully I can put down Stable Diffusion XL because it's just taking up a little too much of my time, if you know what I mean. I will see you soon, kids. Bye.